TT21, TN72 and TA50. What do these numbers mean? In this video, I'm gonna show you what they are, what comes in the box, and why you might need one in your aircraft for the upcoming season. The Trig TT21 is the compact, lightweight, super easy to use transponder from Trig Avionics. Its size format makes it easy to fit into nearly any type of aircraft, from microlights to balloons and gliders to Cessnas. The TN72 is the fully certified GPS receiver that gets you seen by all. It's also very easily mountable and it's designed to work with the TT21. The TN72 needs an antenna and this is where the TA50 comes in. This is an internal GPS antenna to provide the TN72 with a GPS feed and there's also an externally mounted antenna such as the TA70 which is more suited to metal aircraft with their signal blocking structures. In the box we've got the TT21 and TC20 installation kit and in here we've got so many things. We'll start with this little section of black pneumatic tubing. So this allows you to connect the transponder to your static system in the glider or in the aircraft to make sure you've got a reliable static source which is going to feed your transponder with altitude information. We've then also got some little quick release clamps and we've got two sets of screws we've got four short screws uh, and these four screws are used to mount the tc20 control head in the panel and then we've got four longer screws which are also used to mount the tc20 control head in the panel but only when you're using the 57 mil uh, adapter plate uh, and then we've got some quick release clamps which are just designed to organize your cabling or mount the pneumatic tubing. We've got a plug housing this is the smaller one and this is uh, for the nine pin connector which goes into the back of the TC20 control head. The TC20 plug itself with some pins, TNC connector this you can use to connect the transponder to your coaxial cable in the aircraft for the, for the transponder antenna. Another larger plug housing, this is the 25 pin plug and that's to go into the Trig TT21 itself. And then we've also got a 25 pin plug with male pins, that's to uh, wire into the TT21. These two adapters and they're to be used uh, to allow you to fit the TC20 control head into a standard 57mm instrument hole. Very widely used in gliders, but also many powered aircraft. And then we've got some pneumatic connectors. We've got a T-piece and two straight pieces. Again, just to allow you to easily connect your TC20 control head uh, to get a static pressure for the transponder. We have also got the Trig installation manual. We've got a really important piece of paperwork, which is the Form 1. This, make sure you don't lose this. As soon as you get this, I usually take a photocopy and keep it somewhere safe or keep it with the aircraft's paperwork. Um, but yeah, this basically allows you to install this instrument into any certified aircraft. So really important to keep hold of that. The transponder's worth very little without it. We've got a little red um, template guide. So this would allow you to cut the hole um, into your instrument panel. If, you, if you're not using the 57mm adapter plates, then that's really useful as a drill guide. We've got the operating manual. So for the pilots to understand how to use the kit, you'll see it's pretty small. Um, and there's a good reason for that. It's because the, the, the device itself is so easy to use. Um, then underneath this, foam we've got some really nice custom cut foam there um, which is looking after the TC20 control head so that's how you interact with the transponder once it's installed in the panel uh, and then we've also got the TT21 transponder unit itself okay we'll start with the control head I'll just talk you around so on the front face we've got the ident button so if the air traffic controller asks you to squawk ident 
just a simple case of pressing that button. We've got a control knob at the bottom here, which allows you to select between off, standby, ground, on, and altitude. So there, those are the four modes that you might have to use in your transponder. We've got like an enter button at the bottom, so that allows you to uh, select whatever setting is, is uh, on the screen. We've got a VFR button over on this side, and we've got a function button. So VFR allows you to very quickly set your normal standard VFR frequent uh, VFR squawk code. In the UK, that's 7,000. Uh, and then a function button if you want to change any back-end settings in the device. And then we've got the main selector knob down here, and that's what we'll use to interact with the um, with the display. On the back, we've got a nine-pin plug, and that's how it connects to the transponder. And then we've also got a static connector, and this is where that pneumatic tubing is going to run to and that's how the transponder takes a static pressure feed from your aircraft. So the transponder is really simple. So Trig have got this uh, specific split unit um, mentality, which makes it very easy to fit into nearly any type of aircraft. Uh, there are many aircraft that have got big constraints when it comes to installing it in the panel. So having this split unit makes it very easy to fit that somewhere on your instrument panel because you can see how little space that takes. And if you want, you can actually install it, just literally what you can see there. Or if you've got a 57 mil hole, you use these adapter plates. And using these adapter plates, you can then install it in any 57 mil, in any 57 mil instrument hole on any panel, which is quite nice. And then yeah, you can have the majority of the stuff uh, mounted remotely wherever it's convenient in the aircraft. I've seen this in some gliders mounted uh, behind the pilot seat, which is quite good because then it means you've got a very short transponder antenna run. Um, and again, really useful if you've got a very busy instrument panel. Uh, it's got a quick release latch, which holds it into this holder. So you just need to securely mount that to your aircraft and that's what fixes this in place uh, and then that just sl simply slots in and latches. Uh, we've got a little heat sink grooves on the top. We've got the 25 pin plug here. This is what connects the transponder to the control head and also to other devices such as the TN72. And then we've got a TNC which is a threaded screw type uh, coaxial connector for your coaxial antenna uh, cable. Very simple, very easy, very light and compact. Um, next up, we've got the TN72. A lot of glider pilots ask me why they might need to fly with a transponder. I've personally found it when I've been flying and trying to do big flights that having a transponder gives you a much bigger chance of crossing, say, the Briars zone um, or getting access to, say, the Southampton zone or just, just local regional airports, getting permission to cross their zones. Um, it allows the controller to see exactly where you are, which gives them much more confidence um, with giving you that zone transit, especially when you're a glider and you can't necessarily sustain um, your altitude. It also has the added benefit of being able, being you more visible to other aircraft. Other aircraft flying around with uh, ADSB in or a transponder receiving capability, they'll be able to see you on their screens, um, which will improve general situational awareness for all pilots involved. It is possible to buy just the transponder. It comes with everything that you need to get the transponder up and running. The TN72 can be purchased later. Let's see what's inside the box. So first up in this one, we've got the Form 1. Really important bit of paper. Make sure you keep that safe. We've got a little guidance leaflet uh, for installation. So keep that for your inspector or installer. We've got the TN72 installation manual. And in the bottom here, we've got the installation kit. Very similar to the transponder installation kit. It comes with the pins for the plug. Now these are crimp pins, same with the transponder. Uh, they're designed to be used with a DMC crimp tool. It lists exactly which tool and which die you need 
in the user manual uh, in the installation manuals we also have a couple that we loan out to customers so uh, if you need one and you're buying the kit from us then get in touch and we can we can lend it to you this is an antenna connector if you're installing it to another type of gps antenna then you'll need that that is the plug itself in which these crimp pins will go into that's just a nine pin plug very simple and then you've got the plug housing uh, and then lastly we've got the trig tn72 itself which is just a, a box it's about sort of a matchstick box in size um, very simple you've got a label with the serial numbers on this side and then you've got four mounting holes um, which make it very simple to hard mount to something and then we've also got the nine pin connector here which goes off to your trig transponder and then you've got the push fit um, antenna connector and that's where the gps antenna uh, gets plugged in which we're going to go and have a look now so this is the smallest box of the lot and this has got the gps antenna this is an internal gps antenna they also do an external gps antenna called the ta70 for metal powered aircraft or anything that specifically requires a more um, solid gps connection in here we've got a little adhesive block and the installation guide for the ta50 and then over here we've also stock the trig tt21 transponder harness so this harness is also compatible with the trig tt22 the only difference between the 21 and the 22 is the transmitting power so if you're flying at higher altitudes you'll need a higher transmitting power generally if you're doing sustained flying above 15,000 feet you'll want the higher transmitting power or if your aircraft certification requires that you have the more powerful transponder then you might need the tt22 but in terms of size format uh, and what comes in the box everything else is exactly the same this is the harness that is available separately so trig build these harnesses um, or you can of course build them yourself with everything that comes with the transponder this end plugs into the transponder that plugs into the back of the tc20 control head and then you've got some loose wires here two of which goes to any sort of GPS input. Um, in this case, we'd be using the TN72. So you'd wire two of these onto a plug for the TN72. And then the other two wires will go off to your aircraft power. Um, so you've got 11 to 33 volts DC and then a ground input there. And in addition to supplying the trig harnesses, we also supply any type of transponder antenna, whether that be an external or internally mounted unit and we can also supply custom length coaxial cables with the correct type of connector for your requirements. The main benefits of the TRIG setup is that they're all compact units and therefore can be installed in nearly any type of aircraft. It's got a very easy to use interface in the TC20 control head and with the TN72 and the antenna you get full ADS-B out visibility so any aircraft that's got ADS-B in whether that be military, commercial, uh, GA and air traffic control stations they'll be able to see you. Um, your ADS-B out will not be filtered out. There is no other setup as capable and widely visible as this one. Check out the Navboys hub on our website for more information, including pro product comparisons with this and other transponder setups. And if you have any further questions or would like us to provide you with a bespoke quote for your aircraft, then please get in touch with us via our website. Lastly, please like and subscribe for more unboxing videos to come.